are going to highlight the identify, isolate, and inform process for a suspect case for a high consequence pathogen, such as Ebola, Marburg virus disease, Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome, and other pathogens. We will also discuss the resources available in the emergency department that outline this process and demonstrate the safe donning and doffing process of PPE in a bag using a trained observer. Before we review the identify, isolate, and inform process, be sure you check with management for the location of your department's special pathogen supplies. These resources will guide you through this low frequency and potential high risk scenario. In the identify process, early recognition is key. First, screen the patients for signs and symptoms upon presenting to the triage desk. Then ask travel screening questions. If the patient is positive for signs and symptoms and has traveled recently to an area of concern for an outbreak, move to the isolation process. The isolation process begins by first having the patient don a mask and then you and any other caregivers at the triage desk donning masks yourselves. The second step is to isolate the patient quickly and avoid the waiting room to prevent potential exposures to others. If possible, coordinate with the charge nurse to place them immediately in the designated isolation room in the special pathogens plan. If it is not available, they should be placed in the triage room identified for isolation until the designated isolation room is available. Once in the isolation room, the resource cart or bin should be brought to the door outside the patient's room. This is where the designated caregivers will don their PPE, which we will demonstrate in a few moments. The resource cart or bin will contain everything you need to guide you through the next steps of the process. The informed process starts with internal notifications, first to the charge nurse. The checklists in the resource notebooks outline the next required notifications and who is responsible for completing them. Once the patient has been assessed and key travel and epidemiological risk factors have been identified, local public health should be notified. Public health is an essential partner in determining if the patient meets criteria to be tested for the pathogen of concern. Now we are going to demonstrate the donning and doffing process for PPE in a bag. The PPE in a bag is the PPE ensemble caregivers will don in the emergency department for a suspect patient with a high consequence pathogen. PPE in a bag consists of a level four fluid impermeable gown, fluid resistant boot covers, a surgeon's hood, and a face shield. The PPE ensemble is completed with a fit tested N95 respirator and two pairs of extended cuff gloves, which are all located in the resource cart or bin. There will always be a trained observer reading the checklist during donning and doffing, guiding the caregiver through the process. The doffing process can be performed in the hallway or in an anteroom based on what is available in your physical space and established workflow. Today, we will be demonstrating the process in a hallway. We are going to now demonstrate the donning and doffing process as we would in a real world situation. I'm going to be the trained observer and Brooke will be our designated caregiver that will put on the PPE and then doff the PPE. So I'm going to grab the checklist that's located in our cart All right, Brooke, first we're gonna to prepare to don the PPE, and I want you to start by removing all your personal items, such as any jewelry, watch, your cell phone, and your ID badge. Wanna make sure your hair is secure, which you already have it secured, and if you had glasses on, we would wanna secure your glasses. Uh, and then we would have you sign in on the roster and take your temperature and record it. And that roster is also located in the top drawer of the cart or would be in your bin as well. You're gonna gather your PPE in a bag in the correct size. And then you're gonna start by performing hand hygiene. And next you're going to inspect your PPE to make sure it's free of defects, really focusing in on those seams and making sure there's no manufacturing defects on the seams.
Okay. Does it look good? Looks good. All right. The first thing I'm going to have you do is don your boot covers. Okay, now you're going to perform hand hygiene. Okay, now Brooke, you're gonna don your inner nitrile gloves. Next, you're gonna don your gown. And this is where the trained observer can help by making sure all of the ties and Velcro are fastened. So I'm gonna fasten the top Velcro here. I'm gonna tie the inner tie here. And then I'm gonna tie the external tie to make sure we have full coverage. You always wanna make sure and tie the ties in the bow to assist in the doffing process. Okay, Brooke, now you're going to don your N95 respirator. I want you to make sure the straps are separated before you put it on and that put one strap on the top of your head and the other strap will be at the base of your head. All right, now you're going to don your surgical hood and tie it loosely in front. I'm gonna again tie it in a bow and tie it loosely and then tuck these tails inside the gown so that we have coverage of her neck. Now you're gonna don your external gloves and you wanna make sure that the cuff of that gown is extended and you can anchor it with one of your fingers to make sure it stays down as you don this extended cuff glove. In doing this process, you wanna assure that the extended cuff is over the fabric cuff of the gown. Now we're going to don the face shield and I want you to anchor the foam on the top of your surgical hood and then extend the strap back behind. This is where the trained observer can certainly help to make sure that it's positioned correctly and that we don't have any exposed skin on her forehead. All right, now I'm going to inspect your PPE ensemble. I want you to put your hands up and just turn in a circle. And I'm just looking to make sure I have good coverage and that the gown covers down where her boot covers are to make sure none of her scrubs are showing. And you look good. So I'm gonna read some safety instructions to you before you go in the patient room. Okay. Keep your hands away from your face. Limit the surfaces that you touch. Sanitize your gloves immediately if they're soiled. Take your time and ask for any help or coaching if you need it. We'll be right outside. Okay. okay. Three things I want to highlight. Number one, everything you need will always be in the cart or bin, from the PPE to all the supplies to the checklists. Number two, we will always utilize a trained observer. And number three, the donning process is designed for you to put the PPE on in the correct order for you to doff safely. Now we will demonstrate the doffing process. A trained observer will be used and will guide you through each step of the process utilizing the doffing checklist. Please do not proceed in the doffing until you are instructed by the trained observer. The trained observer does not need to wear PPE if they are six feet away from the caregiver doffing. The trained observer should be in the PPE in a bag ensemble if they are within six feet of the caregiver doffing. 
Doffing slowly and carefully are important for safety. Now we are going to start the doffing process. First, the trained observer will have the doffing area prepared. They will have the following in place and ready. Two garbage cans with biohazard bags, one on the hot side of the doffing pad and one on the clean side of the doffing pad, a chair or a stool, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, extra gloves, and the doffing pad zones designated with tape. Now we are going to start the doffing process. I have stepped more than six feet away from Brooke, so I will not be wearing PPE as I read through the checklist. Brooke and I have communicated through the window with a thumbs up cue that she is ready to start. Okay, now Brooke will step out of the patient room and onto the hot side of the doffing pad, and she will not be touching the outside of the patient door. Okay, Brooke, we are going to go through this process slowly and methodically. I will talk you through every step. Please do not proceed without my instruction. Please keep your hands away from your face. And now we're gonna start by you holding your hands up and turning slowly in a circle so I can inspect your PPE to see if I see any signs of contamination. And you look good. Okay, Brooke, I'm gonna have you start by performing hand hygiene. Now I want you to doff your external gloves using glove and glove technique and gently discard them in the garbage can. And perform hand hygiene. Okay, now you're going to doff your face shield. You're gonna remove it by leaning forward slightly, grabbing it at the temples, pulling it off your head and discarding it in the garbage can in front of you. And perform hand hygiene. Next, you're going to doff your surgical hood. You're gonna remove it by grabbing it in the back, leaning forward, pulling it off your head and discarding it. Good job. And perform hand hygiene. Okay, next you're going to doff your gown and I'm gonna talk you through each step. So first I want you to find the tie on your left side and untie it. Okay, good job. And now I want you to uh, grab it at the waist and break that inner tie. So just grab it and pull it forward. And now I want you to grab up by your shoulders and break that Velcro strap in the back. And now I want you to pull that gown off, turning it inside out and slowly rolling it in on itself into a small ball so that you are only touching the inside of the gown. Once you get it rolled up small, just place it gently in the garbage can. Great job. And perform hand hygiene. Okay, next you're going to doff your boot covers. So you're gonna sit in that chair, keeping both feet on the dirty side of the, of the uh, doffing pad, okay? And we'll have you start with your left foot. And I'm gonna talk you through the steps first before you start. I want you to touch the inside of the boot cover, extend the boot cover over your heel, and then as you lift your leg up, remove it and discard it and place your foot on the clean side of the doffing pad. Great job. 
discard. And now you're going to repeat that process with your right boot cover. And go ahead and perform hand hygiene. Now you're going to doff those gloves using glove and glove technique. And perform hand hygiene. Now you're going to don clean gloves before you remove your respirator. So to doff your N95 respirator, Brooke, I want you to lean forward, use two hands to grab the bottom strap and pull it over your head, and then repeat that process for the top strap and discard it into the garbage can. And perform hand hygiene. Now you're going to doff those gloves using that same glove and glove technique. And perform hand hygiene. And now you're fine to leave the doffing area. Once the doffing process is complete, the doffing area will need to be cleaned. A caregiver wearing gloves and a mask will roll up the doffing pad starting at the corners, folding the pad inwards towards the middle, not touching the dirty side, so the side that was facing up, touching only the side that was facing down, which was clean. Continue to roll into a small ball and then gently discard in the waste. Once the pad is discarded, disinfect your gloves and doff those gloves. Cleaning the doffing area will continue by disinfecting the chair or the stool and any other surfaces that were used during the doffing process with the appropriate disinfectant wipe. Having established workflows and resources for a suspect patient with a high consequence pathogen is essential in maintaining a culture of safety for our patients and caregivers. Three things I want you to remember. Find the special pathogens resources in your department and familiarize yourself with them. Remember to always utilize the checklist and a trained observer and don and doff slowly and methodically. Thank you for caring about safety for yourselves, for our patients, and for your coworkers.